Well, thank you for being here today. It's always an exciting time when school comes back into session here. And so uh, all the players are back. It's fun to see the familiar faces. So thank you for adjusting your lives too. And now uh, focusing back on the uh, Senate and the House and the governor's office down here at the Capitol. Uh, so as you saw on the floor today, uh, a pretty standard day uh, for opening. We had a couple of resolutions. Uh, but I think uh, things are going to get a lot more interesting going forward based on the agenda that the Democrats have, uh, but then also the work that Senate Republicans are doing on repairing a lot of the damage that was done last session. And we saw the trifecta and the extreme pace that way they went forward. Uh, and we are really working hard as a team to address those needs, point them out, and show us some of the issues that we have. Today I've got Senator Duckworth with me. We'll talk a little bit about one of those issues, uh, the SRO issue uh, today that's been a hot topic. It looks like it's uh, being scheduled today in, in both the House and the Senate uh, for later this week, uh, it's those discussions going forward. Uh, so with that, uh, I'm open to questions that, that you may have about the session, opening day, and whatnot. Can we talk to Senator Duckworth about SRO? The, the House already had a little fight over it, um, declare, tried to declare an emergency, sure. saying that they're not moving fast enough. Uh, the House looks like they could have it on the floor next week, and Senator Murphy just said two to three weeks before it's on the floor. Is that fast enough for you? Uh, no, fast enough for me would have been a special session, but I'm a little biased. I think, uh, I think House Republicans are underscoring what they're hearing from school districts, from law enforcement, from families who are concerned about the safety of their students, their teachers in schools. Uh, so I, I fully understand why they would try to fast track and declare an emergency so that bill could be passed as soon as possible. I will say, however, uh, as I've said from the very beginning, as it pertains to fixing the school resource officer issue, uh, we want it to be bipartisan. We truly do. This is not Republicans versus Democrat uh, when it comes to the safety of our kids. So uh, I do uh, appreciate the fact that Speaker Hortman does appear to be moving a SRO bill somewhat quickly in the House. I think it's scheduled to be heard in the uh, Education Committee in the House today and later in public safety this week. So uh, although we may still have discussion about the language in that bill, I am happy to see a couple of things. Number one, I'm glad that Democrats have joined us in admitting there needs to be a fix. And I'm also glad to see that they're trying to do something sooner rather than later, given the fact that we didn't have a special session to address it. What are your thoughts on the DFL proposal? Have you seen it? Um, I mean, I, I know in the House they're introducing a DE in today's committee session. So, I mean, is there a stance you have on it? There is a stance I have on it, believe it or not. So obviously we'd like to see the eventual version that we know um, is likely going to come to the House and maybe the Senate for a vote. Like you mentioned, there is a delete all amendment that was going to change the language of the bill as, as you might see it online. Uh, here's the deal. There are some aspects of the current proposed DFL bill that, that I like based on feedback I've received from stakeholders, mainly law enforcement, who are the ones that are very concerned about this bill as well as school districts. Uh, but there are also uh, components or aspects of the bill that they're more hesitant about. So I think we still have to do our work to fix it. The good news is this, unlike last time when this bill passed, uh, it kind of went uh, under the radar. We didn't get stakeholder uh, feedback. It didn't go to the appropriate committees. We're correcting that mistake this go around. It's gonna go through the committee process, multiple committees, it's gonna have hearings, it's gonna have opportunity for stakeholders to be a part of the process and voice their concerns and, and also what they like about the bill. So hopefully, because we're following the legislative process like we always should, whether you're Republican or Democrat, hopefully we'll end up with a better product that actually does fix the issue at hand. Well, what aspects of it do you like? I mean, you, you, you said you like certain aspects of it, didn't tell us what, so. Sure. Uh, well, there's, it, it's a long bill. The, I think the most important aspect of it that we like is that it, it, it uh, changes a word from may to shall. Uh, and that's important when you're talking about school resource officers and their ability to protect, defend, deter, uh, and really keep everybody safe in a school building. Uh, there's other language in there specific to law enforcement that allows them and adds a little bit of clarity, some of the clarity they've been asking for, that allows them to do the job they need to do to keep kids safe, keep teachers safe, and not uh, uh, think that it's going to lead to uh, something that in the past would not have been an issue. Leader Johnson, can we talk equal rights amendment? You probably saw the rally today. We've heard from both of the Democratic leaders that they expect that amendment to pass with abortion access language in it. Anyone in your caucus interested in that? Yeah, and I think it, it's interesting. I think that will be on the ballot. If they do manage to pass it, it will be on the ballot in 26. Now, if there's some that was urgent that would be done this year, uh, again, this is they're just taking a, an extreme stance again and making this a political issue. And so that's what we're seeing here uh, in this particular piece of legislation. 
again, if they really wanted to see this happen, it should have been done in this upcoming election. But again, it's just a political game piece for them, it seems. Is there any, you know, anything against putting that up to voters, you know, as an amendment? Do you guys have any issues with that? I mean, the, the legislative process is always open to that. That's, that's how we do it in Minnesota. Anything that we want to change on the Constitution, uh, it goes through the legislation, and then it goes on to the ballot for, for the, the voters to approve or disapprove. And so, you know, this is, again, one of those uh, particular pieces. So. Um, Leader Murphy referenced maybe a push to expand the universal free meals at school. Uh, adding milk for kids who don't have, who don't get the full lunch. Sure. What do you think about that? You know, Minnesota has always prided itself on its education system. And what we see going forward here is, is we're really stretching our education system very, very thin. You know, we're not investing in the bread and butter anymore of our teachers, of our students, and we're expanding all these costs going forward. And as you saw, the cost escalated just immensely for that initial free school lunch bill that came through. And so, I mean, it sounds like a great idea, uh, but where are they gonna find the money? They had $17.5 billion of surplus last year. Democrats did, they spent that. They raised taxes by $10 billion. They spent that and we're looking at a budget deficit going forward. So. Uh, they're going to really have to scrape to try to figure out ways to prioritize everything that they want to prioritize. You know, whether it's, uh, you know, schools for teachers, whether it's the students, whether, you know, it's more school lunches on top of what they already have. Uh, so there are some real constraints looking at this session. You know, the only time your votes are needed are bonding bill. These even your sessions are typically bonding sessions. What's the, the attitude, appetite after a record bonding bill last session? Well, I, I will say this too. I mean, last year that was the case where our votes were needed uh, to uh, only for that bonding bill. Uh, they were able to stick together uh, pretty well throughout that. You know, maybe the dynamics will be different this year when they don't have money to spend, uh, or maybe there's some uh, internal dynamics that that might change that as well. So, Senate Republicans, with only being down one vote in the minority by one vote, uh, we're going to have a bigger role uh, going into this session. Uh, the bonding bill is one of those bills where we absolutely recognize the need for investment across Minnesota. You know, wastewater, drinking water, roads and bridges, those real bread and butter issues. And so we're willing to come to the table as long as it's a good bill, not full of pet projects, not full of nonprofits, uh, and have that discussion based on what's in the bill. Do you see trading for something again? It was kind of your big power move last session. I mean, this is, this is politics. That's part of it, making these deals and figuring out what's best for Minnesota. And so if we can get a better deal for Minnesota, we're very much willing to, to hold our votes until we can get that. And what kind of priority is it? You know, nursing homes, obviously, it's how you got it. Is there something sure. else like that that you we would want to leverage? That, that's a great question. I mean, there's so much that was damaged last year, whether you're talking about uh, in mandates, whether you're talking about uh, mandates on schools, uh, business, uh, families. Uh, the extreme legislation that was passed in so many different respects last year. We're going to be looking at a lot of this stuff. Well, you know, SROs is a prime example of that. How can we repair some of these things uh, for Minnesotans before we get done with the end of this session? I think that's going to be a top priority of our Senate Republicans. Social Security full repeal still an option? You know, we would love we would love to do something like that, but you know, Senate Democrats again put us into a position where now state government is grown by 40%. Uh, we're, we're building a political palace across the street here for $750 million. Uh, but a cost like the Social Security is going to be hard to find in the budget uh, because now all that money has been spent and we're prioritizing other things than Minnesotans' needs. Where are you guys in sports betting right now? I mean, I know there's a bunch of different proposals and everyone's got their own kind of idea on that. Uh, yeah. I forget which senator put the bill forward, but are you guys you know, fully behind that one? Yeah, we've, we've got a couple of uh, bills that are kind of competing with each other. Uh, senator Klein uh, for the Democrats has one, and then Senator Miller on our side. But, you know, there's so many different uh, interests right now looking at that, whether it's the charities or the state, uh, you know, tax, we've got to be looking at that from a tax perspective. Uh, the uh, tribal communities, you know, all these groups that are, have a hand in it. It seems like they're getting closer in, in some respects, but you know, our caucus is split between pro and con and same with the Democrat side. So this will be a real interesting bill to see if it comes through. I don't know, what, what do you give the odds on this one? Well, you know the standard answer is 50-50 question. 
<laughs> you said yeah. you're going to have a bigger role going into this session. How so? Well, like we talked a little bit before, last year a lot of those uh, issues that came up in front of the Democratic caucus was easy to buy, you know, say, okay, we've got plenty of money, we can do your program uh, if you do this program. So there was a lot of that internal horse trading that went on within the caucus. But now when you don't have the money, things get a little bit more difficult to bridge those issues. And so I'm not saying that these are uh, for sure or not, but it seems like the environment is better to have more bipartisan relationship going forward. Do you see cracks in their 34 votes without their leader? It seems like uh, Senator Murphy is doing a, a good job of holding them together, and so this is a new day with uh, new faces over there. Uh, so I wish her the best in, in what she's doing. Uh, but no, I, I wouldn't say that I see cracks uh, initially here at all. Do you and your caucus still support remote voting? Hmm. So again, this is one of those issues where we have people on both sides of the issue. You know, uh, from some perspectives, we want to make sure that people uh, are here doing the people's work, uh, but also we recognize the nature of a modern environment where people are spread across the state. Sometimes they can get in. Uh, sometimes there's emergencies that come up. So uh, this is an ongoing discussion that we're having. How do you feel about it? Personally, uh, you know, I think it's a tool that's been pretty effective over the last three or four years, proven itself out, um, but it should not be abused. I mean, we're here, we've been elected, we're here to represent the people, and part of our job is, is being in our seat and talking to constituents and talking to the folks with real interest down here, so it's a, a very, very critical part. What are you most eager to get done this week? This week? Man, we've got... To get the SRO vote. We've got... We could do the SRO bill. That would be a, a big one. That's one that we've talked about for quite some time since it came up last fall. Um, there's a number of tax fixes and whatnot uh, that came up, but right now is really a time to set the table and set our priorities for the upcoming session. You guys, uh, it sounds like the flag issue may not be as high on the list for Republicans in the House. I mean, is that top priority for you guys heading into the session? Is that an urgent thing you guys want to get fixed? Quite, I, I don't think it's a, a top priority for us, but what I will say is that our inboxes were filled constantly with people that were asking about it. And so I, th I think the issue there wasn't, hey, we want to you know, have a vote on it, whatever it's going to be, but simply, why were we cut out of the process? Why were Minnesotans cut out of the process? And so if we can go back and figure out a way to allow Minnesotans to have more input into that flag, whether they want it or they don't want it, I think that would make most Minnesotans feel better, like their voices are actually being heard, not some bureaucratic committee that was appointed uh, over here and then at the end of the day, here's the outcome and this is what you're going to get. I think that just feels unfair to most people and I agree. Mr. Leader, are you wearing the pin of the old no, seal or I, not? Okay, because I, I heard don't. some members were. I didn't know if you were Oh, no, as well. I, I'm not. Okay. There were some very, very long floor sessions last year, uh, driven in part by some of your members talking a lot, a lot of questions. Is that something you anticipate again this year, just feeling your caucus's temperature? Yeah. Senator Duckworth, are you, you're going to keep it down this year a little yeah, bit more? I'll settle it down a notch. Okay. Here's the reason why people ask that question a lot. And the reason why the floor sessions ended up so long is simply because we weren't able to have those conversations anywhere else. Whether it was committee or normally we're you know, in each other's offices, we're talking about bills, you know, talking about ideas, it seemed like there was a firewall between us and the Democrats last session. And so the only time that we had the opportunity to do real input on those bills was on the floor. We're going to take that opportunity and stand up for our constituents every single time. And so that's what we did over and over again. Now, if they were you know, like we begged them to, said, hey, why don't you come back, give your input on this bill, let's see if there's a way that we can make both sides happy, have a real bipartisan bill, you would not have seen that happen. And so that's where I'm really looking for this bipartisan work, is if we can work on bills together, come out with a compromise that we can all agree on, those floor sessions are going to be really quick. So I hope to see that change. Back to flag, when do you see your members bringing up the flag issue? Have they said on timing? There's no timing on that. I know Senator Draskowski uh, had a minority report with Representative Olson after that came out, and then there was another, uh, I know, on, on that report as well. 
Uh, but I think it's something that, that we'll be looking at for solutions. Uh, he has a series of bills that he's looking uh, to propose. Um, so eventually you'll see something here within the next few weeks uh, that they may help solve some of the consternation that Minnesotans feel over that new flag. Any idea what that could look like? I know I, know I asked you that last week, but I mean, yeah, we're sure. not a referendum state, so. Sure. No, we're not a referendum state, but if we wanted to put something on the Constitution, we could as a legislature. But I don't know if we want to get that extreme. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly how we want that to look. If we want to just do it from a legislative statutory perspective, we could do that as well. Uh, there are a number of different ways. But I'm just waiting to see what Senator Droskowski brings forward uh, with his proposals. Um, forgive me if you've already covered this. Um, I just wanted to ask you about the Equal Rights Amendment. They're sure. talking about wrapping in the abortion issue. Um, your thoughts on that? Yeah, and this, again, we can talk a little bit about it. It's something where if it seemed like it was real urgent, that should have been done and we could put it on the ballot in the 24 election. Again, this is just their way of playing political games, it seems like. Uh, let's kick this out into the 26 election season. Uh, so there's an, a few more years that people have to wait for it. But it's, it's pretty interesting, the fact that they're wrapping in uh, that language. There's a lot of extreme language in there with a lot of social issues. Uh, and you know, there's protections for some, protections uh, that are dropped for others. And so um, I think that really needs to be going to our body, take a look at what that looks like. But to me, it, it seems to be complete, uh, just political gamesmanship at this point. And sir, I apologize again if you've already addressed this, but can you describe some of the reaction and the talk on the flag just that you're hearing from your constituents? Like sure. What kinds of things do you hear? Well, so people, I mean, there are people that agree that it needs to be changed uh, that still are opposed to the flag the way that it came out simply because, as we talked about, uh, you know, it felt like they got cut out of the conversation. It was a committee that put it together, appointed committee, uh, bureaucratic structure there, and then they came out and said, here's your new flag. And so I think a lot of people, that was their, their issue. It didn't feel like we had a say in it, and it didn't feel like they certainly didn't have a say in it. Um, and so that's, that's where, if we're gonna redesign this flag, let's make it a flag that is representative of all Minnesotans, not just a committee. Clarification on the SRO. Uh, will there be a Senate companion bill, or what's the process here? Is there going to be a companion bill, or are you going to just wait for the House bill to work its way through and, and take that one up to modify? Uh, great question. There is a Senate companion bill. It's my understanding that Senator Bonnie Westland has that. We're due to, we are due to hear that in the Senate Education Policy Committee on Wednesday. Uh, that being said, uh, I have uh, dropped a few different versions that could also fix that, and then I have a uh, version that's also going to be introduced in the House by Republicans there, Representative Jeff Whitty, who is a former police officer and a former school resource officer himself, that is more reflective of, we think, the bipartisan, non-political uh, changes that should be made to the law that was passed last year that will satisfy law enforcement, satisfy school districts, and satisfy parents in, as it relates to the safety of uh, their students in our schools. Do you foresee someone in the Senate, maybe yourself, introducing a similar amendment to the DE being introduced in the House? Well, Quinn, I may have not asked for that to be drafted before I came here. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys.